Hello, uh, FCM Blog fans. Today, we have a really special guest right now. Uh, our EuroCup champion, EuroCup finals MVP, Gabon Beast. Welcome, Stefan. Uh, thanks for having me, man. So happy to be here, to join everybody. Yeah. Nice to be here. Yeah, we really appreciate uh, you're here. We really like to having you here. Uh, we really appreciate it. Well, it's a pleasure. Yeah. To begin with, uh, how are you? Uh, how are you doing in this quarantine? Uh, hope everything all right with you and with your uh, family. Oh, everything is good, man. Luckily, no one in my in my family was affected by the the pandemic. I mean, we stayed home. We made sure to do the right thing, stay clean, stay protected, stay home, stay safe. You know. Yeah, appreciate hearing it. Appreciate hearing it. So, okay, uh, let me start with the first question. I have. So, as far as I know, uh, you haven't played since January 2019. Uh, what have you been since doing that? Uh, since January, I mean, I came back to the States. I actually have a business here in California that I run. And I've been stuck doing, I mean, I've been stuck doing that for a while. You know, I wanted to go back and play uh, towards the end of the 2019 season, but I had bigger obligation here uh, with my business and my family was here with me. So it was an easy decision uh, to make. You know, I got to prepare for after basketball. And this was a big opportunity for me to just um, to stay home and make sure business is okay. Oh, yeah, nice. So if it's not private, what business are you running right now? Uh, I mean, we can talk about it. It's like, a, it's a big, big, big story. Okay. And uh, I mean, uh, it's a long story. I mean, I mean, since, I mean, uh, to get back to um, what are we going to talk about? The Galatasaray, since um, since the time I was in Galatasaray, you remember I, I got punished. I got a punishment for yeah. for uh, cannabis. So at the same time, I was also interested in invested in a new industry. So what I did was taking all my winnings from uh, Galatasaray contract and invested in cannabis uh, cannabis business. Okay. So it's nice. Uh, hope everything all right with your business. Hope you <laughs> hope you are making enough money. I mean, it's one of the few businesses in America that we deem uh, essential during the pandemic. We had to stay open because it's, uh, it's medicine, you know. This is one thing people don't understand, like cannabis is now medicine and it's deemed medicine uh, in California and in, in almost 25 states in America. It's becoming oh, a new industry. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for the government to let, to let all the businesses, especially in California, open because it was a necessity during the, the pandemic. Yeah, sure. It's nice to hear that. So, uh, as we start with your business, but I am looking forward to uh, hear from hear you from the Galatasaray days. So, let me start with this question. Uh, actually, we all know that you had a very special season with Galatasaray, and personally, uh, you were my uh, actually favorite player uh, in that season. You were kind of my hero. You were kind of my hero, yeah. And what would you like to say about these days? It was all special for the fans, and I know that it was all special for the coach and the team. What would you like to say? I mean, it was, a, it was a, an amazing time for me, you know. I mean, to be part of this organization and with the fans we had and the coach, you know, it was the coach that gave us, gave us a lot of confidence as players. So to get the chance to win the championship in Galatasaray when during the summer before, prior to that, we talked about it, me and Coach Ataman was very, very, very special. I mean, it's like the whole season. I can replay the whole season in my head yeah. every year of my life. I can replay each game, how we went about winning the championship, who was involved, and how the whole, I mean, even the whole city embraced us winning that championship. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. And as you mentioned, Ataman, uh, what would you like to say about the coach? Uh, we all know that you have a really special bond with Ergin Ataman. What would you like to say about him? Oh, he's a really good coach to play for. I mean, you can only, you, as a player, to have this type of coach, uh, he's, a, he's a player's coach. He knows everybody's strength. Of course, he's, uh, he loved the offensive game, but he also has great strategy on defense, and he values defensive player. You know, I'm mostly, I would mostly consider a defensive player, and he put me in high standard on the team, gave me a lot of responsibility that I don't, mind, I don't shy away from. Uh, you can see now, even with FS, how his teams are always um, high-scoring teams. 
Yeah. Playing hard on defense, it's like the same approach that he has uh, in every team he played for. I, I enjoyed a lot playing for Arsenal. Yeah. So, uh, have you actually have you been watching the FS games lately uh, before the quarantine? Um, I watched I watched some games. I watched some games. I mean, clearly they're like they were a contender this year season and yeah. last year did really 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 good. You know. Yeah. And to see FS as an organization because I play for the organization and I know I have a lot of friends still working there and yeah. playing there. And I I know that the organization appreciate what uh, Ataman and the team is doing right now because it's it's a long time due for this organization to be in the top European, um, especially when they made the final four the year before. You know. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, I personally think that this pandemic was a really really unfortunate thing for FS because uh, I personally think that they were going to win the championship this year, the Euroleague. Definitely, definitely. They are the right teams, the right players. I mean, a group, of, a great group of guys. You know, the guys that they had in FS right now is the team that play together. You can clearly see that they're friend in in and outside the court. And um, I mean, it's, it's too bad for the pending. But I'm sure if they keep the same team, it's going to be even better next year. Yeah, sure. Hopefully. So uh, we mentioned Ergin Ataman. You also said. Uh, his mentality on the court and off the court. But I would like to say that most of the players he worked with say that he gives a really, really much freedom in the court to the players. Uh, do you agree with that? Uh, and what do you think about it? What makes him special? I mean, it's, it gives you freedom, but it's, it's, I mean, it's not it's tricky freedom. He lets you express yourself on the floor, but he still have guidelines and how he still has way he wants to play basketball. He allow you as a player to do what you want to do, but he has high expectation for everybody. Yeah. Really high, really high. And probably this is why he's one of the best coaches in the Europe right now. Oh, definitely. He's top, top, top in Europe he, right now. I think people should show more respect to Ataman in Europe. He, he knows, he knows the game. He knows the players. Yeah, and when exactly. I mean players, you know, most players and how they play in Europe, you know, so he, he, He's part, he's part of European basketball history, so you got to respect that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, another question about Ataman. What uh, do you think he will be making to NBA one day? Can he be an NBA coach? I mean, he definitely got the swag for it. You know, he definitely, yeah. like, he definitely got the confidence. It's a, di it's a totally different ball game, and uh, you cannot fight the, the language barrier and the, sure. cultural, the, the cultural differences. These are things that he, if he plan on doing that, he definitely have to overcome. I mean, I did it coming from Africa and coming to the States and going to college and getting involved with sports. I did it many times when I went and played in other countries, you know, and being part of basketball and discovering other cultures. A lot of players are doing it. It's not impossible to go into a different culture or different sports arena and, um, and, and prove yourself and win at that level. It's just it's tough, and you gotta be willing to pay uh, to to work just as hard and and be as resilient to get there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So I really would like to jump to the uh, Euro Cup final game. Uh, you know, at mm -hmm. the Strasbourg. Uh, do you remember what you felt when you step on the court? It was a crazy, crazy atmosphere, and I was also there. And it was probably one of the best atmospheres uh, in the basketball history. Right? What do you think? Man, it was the it was the best finals I ever seen, and the best finals I've been part of. I mean, bar none, it was truly really amazing. I mean, I I knew from the time from warm up that there was no chance that we would lose this final. <laughs> yeah, there was no there was no way we would lose. Like it was impossible to me that we could lose that year with the fans we had, with the team we had. I mean, I was convinced by. I mean, I was convinced at the game in Strasbourg. I knew we were gonna win. I know yeah, we're going to win the championship. Exactly, exactly. So, this was the that, feeling also I was sharing when I like just entered the arena. You know, like I, I've seen like 15,000 people. I don't know how many. It was like a, a many people. And I see that there is no way Strasbourg can get out of this with the title. No, no way. I was too confident, too confident at home. We we're, were we're uh, great rhythm. We had a great group of guys on the team. I mean, everybody participated that game. From the people in the bench to the to the starting five, I mean, there was no way that we would lose that game. I mean, I'm, I still get jitters thinking about it right now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, we talk about the Euro Cup, and 
Uh, I want to ask you, what was the toughest game, like on your way to the Euro Cup title? What do you think? Maybe Gran Canaria? Yes. Yeah, that's away what, game. The, the away what. game. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I, as soon as you you ask me, that's the first thing I talk about. Gran Canaria. It was tough, and it's always tough to play there. I mean, it's always tough to play against that team. If I played in ACB, and you know, ACB is tough to play against Gran Canaria. Every team that plays against Gran Canaria knows that Gran Canaria. It does not matter what kind of players they have, that organization in general, they always make a good job making it hard for you. And to just get, I mean, to after passing them, I mean, I think it was Omich was the starting center over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And, um, they have like, and, um, uh, I mean, they have a great group of guys. And uh, yeah, it was tough, man. Yeah, it was one of the toughest games, you know, like uh, I was having a heartbreak, man. You know, you know the block, by Vladimir Mitso the, at the last second. Uh, oh my goodness, I was that's... having a heart attack, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. It was tough. I was like, <laughs> no, no, like, and then yes, you know, like Vlado yes. man, did it. We are, we are guys who wanted to win bad that year, man. There was no way we, we lost that game. I mean, at one point, I think I fouled out. Yeah. And I, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. I guess when I fouled out, I for a second. For a second, I, I thought I, I thought it's over. The game is finished. Like you know, the selfish player that you want to be, you want to be the guy who make it, uh, who 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 get the win. You know, the selfish in me you want to be like, oh fuck, we. <laughs> but man, we are. But we are so many great guys who wanted to win on the team. And Mitchell, yeah. I mean, uh, who is it? Curtis Gerald, Eric McCollum, Eric McCollum, um, and you. you Blake Shill, I mean, those guys, they just wanted to get the job done. And that I was... Mean, you, you forget the Joker guy. Who? Goxinin? No. Or a man C9? Chuck Davis. Chuck. Man, Chuck came in and just helped us throughout the whole rest of the season. I can't hear you. What happened to the volume? Yeah, it's okay right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Chuck came Chuck came in and helped us right away from gate one. I mean, you have to respect Chuck. Chuck was big in the in the, it was huge in the Turkish league, man. Yeah. Turk uh he came in and just helped in every level of defense, offense. He made sure to I mean he get all those little buckets that you get, offensive rebound. Love yeah. Chuck, man. Love yeah. Chuck. Yeah. He was definitely a joker. Yeah, and uh, I would like to talk about Eric McCollum. You know, like he was the uh, regular season MVP, and yep. while you were the MVP of the finals, um, mm -hmm. actually we all know that he had a wonderful season at Galatasaray. Like he was amazing. And mm -hmm. but why couldn't he be persistent? Like you know, like at the top level, at the Euroleague level. Like what is what is missing in him? I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not a coach. But I think uh, Eric is a scorer, yeah. you know. The way the game is, has been played in Europe, there is only a certain type of player that, that are allowed to be that scorer. It's not that many people in Europe that you can just give the ball and give the team and say score. It does not, I mean, you can count in your hand. Shane Larkin, yeah. uh, Shved, um, maybe a little bit Nando De Colo. Yeah. I still, yeah. Another one is... Uh, Rodriguez, maybe. At Olympia, even, Rod even Rodriguez don't have. I mean, even Rodriguez, it's not even he can score, but it's not. It's not. It's not really. His his goal is not to go out there and score a crazy amount of points. You're We're right. talking about the player like Eric McCollum, who wants to score forty every game. Yeah, he's uh, a pure scorer. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, uh, the guard that used to play in Panathinaikos and now play for Olympia, uh, Olympia Milano. Um, crap, I can't believe I can't remember his name now. Uh, crap. Ah, Nick Calates, maybe no. No, 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 Mr. Oh. Natural. What's his name? Oh. Uh, crap. Oh. He played for Olympia Milano. Milano, and right now? He's yeah. playing for Milano right now? Yeah. Oh. Big. Ah, yeah. maybe Mike James, Mike James. Mike James, that's Mike what James, I'm thinking. Yeah. Mike yeah. James, I'm sorry, it took me so long to remember, man. <laughs> my bad, Mike. My bad, Mike. Uh, but yeah. Somebody like Mike James. So Eric McCollum is one of those guys that just, they want, to, they want to score 40. You have to find, I mean, I think he just never put in a position or never found a team in Europe that gave him that same, 
the same courtesy that he had, the same courtesy that Ataman gave him in Galatasaray, for example, and the same thing that's given to to uh, Mike James, uh, Shane Larkin, and Shved, yeah. those guys. And I think, I mean, if he, it's possible he can find the team, but I think his, like, this is where I lie, the fact that he never got successful or got where he wanted to be in a EuroLeague level, my opinion, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting opinion. So uh, we were talking about good things, and I would like to jump to the uh, one of the best things uh, for me, actually, in your career. And your days, you know, like we kind of talked about it, your days at Galatasaray ended a bit unfortunate. And what would you like to tell, tell about the doping situation? And I read, a, I read an interview that you gave, and you said that it was really disappointing, but you did not expect a one-year ban, right? You were expecting a ban less than a one year, or maybe kind of, I don't know, three months, something like that. What yeah, would you I tell mean, about this situation? I definitely expected less, you know, it was the first time that I ever failed a doping test. And it's not like I'm a, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not the player who goes out there and pretend I'm the center of the world, you know? So, yeah. but I know I'm a big, I'm, a, I represented basketball in the FIBA level, EuroLeague level, everywhere I've been, I always represented basketball in the, in the, in the most gracious way and in the most respectful way. And just for me, my first offense to get a year off the back was just strange to me because I never got in trouble. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it was disappointing, but I mean, uh, I went to court. I went to court. We went to court and I, and I proved that, I proved that it wasn't really what it was painted out to be painted as in media or by the yeah. team. Yeah. I'm a risk. I, I mean, I'm clearly, you can see my track record. I'm a very responsible player and I win everywhere I go. So it was, that's the thing that's disappointing. Just, the punishment. I, I, I'm sure people have their opinion about cannabis. That's their opinion. I have yeah, my own yeah. opinion, and my opinions are backed by science. And now the world is opening to the science. So, good luck with your opinions. You know, <laughs> but um, so that's a different conversation. I mean, that's a different conversation. But like, just the punishment. You know, I didn't think I deserve a year. I just we just won. It's not like, and it's not like cannabis helped me win a championship. It's not how it works. Exactly. You know? I was I was saying that I totally agree with you. Um, yeah. You know, like there is no way that cannabis, you know, like how can I say? cannabis is not a doping. Yeah, you know, yeah. cannabis cannot make you win the game. You know, we all know that stuff. But hopefully, uh, the world is changing, and hopefully, the FIBA will change, and I don't know, maybe they will they will change the regulations, something. Uh, I, don't know. I mean, you saw you, you saw. Uh, now the NBA passed the rule they don't test for cannabis anymore. Oh really? I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. The NBA, the NBA, everything is changing. Yeah. So it's gonna be funny now. Three years later, people are not gonna get punished a year, and I lost a year of basketball. How funny is the world, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like it, it would have been different. You know, like I am a, I am a huge Galatasaray fan, and you know, like man, we we won the Euro Cup and. We were looking forward to, you know, like fighting the Euroleague. We deserve the Euroleague. And, you know, like with the punishments given to you, we were kind of disappointed. It would have been different. But, you know. I mean, I would appreciate, I would appreciate it a little more, even if, even if the Galatasaray as a team said a statement with me. But exactly. the, first, the first thing they did was making a statement that I embarrassed the brand, Galatasaray brand. I yeah. was like, I, why I brought we brought a championship exactly. how am I embarrassing brand by how if anything I embellish it more I put more, one more banner in there it's like, yeah. it was like that yeah. was the, the other thing that was really disappointing like I felt like everyone that I played for because I gave everything to, to God exactly. Exactly. everything but like there is not one person that said anything positive about me in the media or anything it's like Galatasaray as a crew just disappeared behind me I exactly. was just left alone with nobody. I mean, no one. I don't want to say any name, but like no one said anything. Nobody. And no one, everyone was treating me like a friend. Everyone was happy when I was dunking, yelling at people, getting in fights in the game. Everyone was supporting, yelling. I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to come in front of the fan and do the, the, the chant. Like some Americans or foreign players, when they come to Galatasaray, they don't want to deal with this thing. The, the, 
See that one was doing it. All right. See that one was doing it before I got to go touch. Right. Why? Some. I didn't decide to go and do that thing. People wanted me to do it. I don't like. It's not like I went over there and not trying to be part of it. But when the whole bad thing happened, everyone, everyone disappeared. I can tell you the only person that texts me and is still friends with me is the team doctor. The team doctor is the only one who actually went on social media and advocated for me. He texts me every day and asks me like how I was doing. He still texts me and he's still like friends today. You know, but anyway, that's how yeah. I feel about the whole situation. Yeah, it was it was really disappointing, and I totally think that it was a pure shame on the Galatasaray board that uh, they behaved to you. Uh, it was a, anyways, it was some bad things for the Galatasaray board. They should have been behaved you in a really, really different manner, but it was passed. And the question was, do you think you would extend your contract with Galatasaray if topping situation did not happen? Definitely, definitely. Um, actually, like I was saying earlier, I had the, actually I was having a meeting with Al-Taman the day before the announcement of uh, the doping test. Uh, we, were talk, we were kind of strategizing how you wanted to approach the next season in EuroLeague and how you wanted to set the team to be set up. We definitely, I mean, it was no-brainer that we were going to be together the following year. Exactly. And uh, actually, I mean, to understand that you're taking the team from where Galatasaray was, winning the Euro, uh, Euro Cup and then playing the Euro League the following year would have been amazing. So we, like, we were all both excited about it and uh, we're planning on doing it. You were saying that you you had a you know like meeting with Ergin Ataman. Okay, I lastly asked that uh, what was his plans for the next year. Um, I mean, his plan was to kind of do the same things he's always been doing: being aggressive on offense and building a strong team and a strong defensive team. That's like really aggressive on offense. That's what I think his plan was going to be. We didn't go too much into details, but to talk about like. Uh, Making sure that I get back on the team, uh, that I get back on the team the following year, was that it wasn't. I was only. I only had a, a one-year deal to come to Galatasaray. So when we talk mostly about that, and had he was counting on me to come back the following year and to be part of the team. Okay, uh, it was good to hear. I mean, he talked. He talked a long, uh, while, a while about my leadership role on the team, that he needed it to to win, and that was the, mis- the, the biggest thing for him. We're talking about it. I mean, we had, we didn't get too much into the fine print of the point, but we kind of understood what the vision was. Yeah, it was really unfortunate that it did not happen. But I don't know. Maybe uh, in some day uh, at Galatasaray again. Maybe I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, you know. we will see. And I want to ask you: after the one-year punishment. Uh, mm-hmm. When it was over, did you receive an offer from Galatasaray? No, actually, no. No, no? no. because because there were some news like leaking in the Turkish media that mm-hmm. we were kind of uh, you know like having some talks with you, uh, but I guess okay, it was wrong. <laughs> I mean, um, I still, I mean, you know the the president of Galatasaray, not the the president of the basketball team, yeah, is actually a French French speaking guy. So yeah. we always has good communication and um and we always communicate in French and even now he texts me sometimes mm-hmm. in French and we still talk a, a little bit. So if you call that communication, maybe that's communication, but we never seriously got into talk about me coming back and got touch right. Okay. Okay. And okay. Uh and I wanna ask you uh the transfer uh that was cancelled. Uh due to your, I don't know, health problems. It was stated like that in the media. Uh, the Strasbourg, uh, after your uh, after your one-year punishment. Uh, what do you want to say about this situation? What was like wrong with your health? Uh, was there something serious? Because after that, I guess you, you played for Pana after that. I mean, it was just a whole, a whole bunch of things, just getting into that Galatasaray, I mean, that uh, Strasbourg deal. You, I mean, during the season with, uh, with Panathinaikos, I was dealing with a small, small, relat- relatively small shoulder injury. Yeah. And I kind of dug into it over there. So even leaving after leaving Panathinaikos, I knew I needed some rest. Yeah. I wanted to go play because I was already in Europe. And my family already left and went back to the States. So it was just a whole bunch of different situations, a whole bunch of different things that kind of made, gave the decision to just 
kind of part ways because I wouldn't I wouldn't be there a hundred percent anyway mentally because what happened whatever happened with Panathinaikos before yeah. and I never I'm never um, and you know I'm from a I'm from I'm from Gabon I'm from yeah. a French speaking country and yeah. I never yeah. played in I never played in France before yeah you know so it was like a totally different thing to me like a new ep- and kind of new chapter that I kind of you know. I wanted to take on, but I think it was just the right, the wrong timing. Yeah. Wrong time. Yeah. 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 And I want to jump on the uh, future plans of yours. Like, uh, you know, like it, at the beginning of the interview, you said that you're running a business, but uh, what is your future plans? Like uh, you also said that, I guess you want to uh, get back to the basketball and what's your plans? Do you want to be a coach or do you want to play basketball again? Or do you want to run your business in the US? Um, I mean, coaching, definitely not. I'm not, I don't think of myself of a coach. I don't think I have the patience. I don't think I have the patience, but maybe who knows? I still want to play, you know, I still got a lot of basketball in me. Uh, I know I, it was the perfect time for me to take the time off. You know, I have the, I can afford it. My family is, my family is good. I can afford to take a time off from basketball so I can focus on other things because I did well with the money I made from basketball. Yeah. But also I don't want to. I never said I never said that I was retired or anything like. That. Yeah, exactly. So I was I was saying I definitely I definitely want to play again. I think I have a lot of basketball in me. Uh, my goal always has been to play until I was maybe 41, 42, because that's what uh, I mean. All the players did it. Kareem Abdul Jabbar did it. Exactly. Like a whole bunch of people playing until we were past their 40. I know I'm in great shape. I've always been in great shape, so I know I can play forever. Uh, I'm sure the opportunity is going to come. And now that my business is settled and everything is doing good, apparently everything is doing good now, I can afford to just leave and I have the freedom to just focus on something that I love, like basketball, and just give it my all, you know. Now it's not so much at this age and this time of my, my career, so much about big contract and stuff, you know. Now I can relax my mind and just focus on playing good basketball. Exactly, exactly. And win championships. Uh- Yeah, exactly. And when you <laughs> when you get back to basketball, uh, do you want to be back to Europe or do you want to stay in US and play basketball? No, no, no. I love Europe. I mean, if I get an opportunity in Europe, you know, uh, I'll gladly run over there. You know, I always love European lifestyle. I always, uh, my family always enjoy it, and uh, my kids miss it. My kids miss it. They oh, always, always get a chance to travel. My wife get a chance to be, uh, to, to see the world, uh, and you know it's good for it's, it's good it's good for it's good for you it's good for you as a kid to grow up in different countries. So I mean I like the opportunity for my family, and I want to have the chance to win a diff- uh, another championship somewhere. So that's exactly. those are the things that are that are driving me. Exactly, and here is the exciting question for me: uh, If everything is set, if everything is good uh, with the team, with the staff, uh, you know, mm-hmm. like with the contract. Uh, do you want to be back to Galatasaray and play basketball again? Of course, of course. If the situation is right, I know this year they're playing the the FIBA the FIBA league, right? The FIBA championship. It's like a new territory for exactly. Galatasaray and for I mean the whole uh, the whole Europe. Yeah. So to try and be one of the first few people to win that would be great. If I get a chance, and uh, things are set up the right way, you know, like uh, back then, I'm not a. Uh, I'm I, I, uh, I'm not opposed to that. Yeah, exactly. And I am, you know, like sending my wishes to the Galatasaray board that they will hopefully uh, think about you joining the team because it will be, you know, like it would be an amazing story for you and for Galatasaray and for the Galatasaray fans because uh, I know that, you know, like all the Galatasaray fans love you. Yeah, you know, like we uh, have a really special bond with you. Ah uh, man, I definitely love all the fans, man. They were the best. I mean, after even after coming from uh, from um, Belgrade and then going to Maccabi and then playing on Panathinaikos, you know, I, I've been blessed to play with like great teams with great fans. But to say that Galatasaray was like Galatasaray was top top, man. The relationship we had with the, that I had with the fans was uh, like. It was the most beautiful things I could have at that time, for me, for my spirit, for motivation to play. You know, I mean, the way they carried us during the game, even when we didn't feel like playing, is truly motivating. 
yeah, yeah. I, I truly believe that our story is missing right now, like was missing. Uh, hopefully we will complete this story one day, one day. For I sure, believe. for sure. Yeah. And I want to ask you, you know, like we were talking about the Panathinaikos, Belgrade and, uh, you know, like Maccabi, all are great stadiums, great atmosphere. And I, I want to ask you, what is the best, best atmosphere you've experienced in your whole career? I mean, you can't, you can't beat winning a European championship. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. There's nothing like it. I mean, I wish I won the European championship in all those places I play for with all the great fans. And we did won some championship, but it's nothing like a European, there's nothing like a European championship. And to just have the appreciation from the final the time you win it was truly, 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 truly amazing, the experience. But to me, God is top right now. Uh, it's not. It's not that I don't love all the other places any less than the Istanbul or Galatasaray fans, or that I love Galatasaray fans more than Panathinaikos fans. For example, it's just I want a European Championship there. If I want a championship in Panathinaikos, I probably would say the Panathinaikos. Yeah. You know, if I want in a, if I want a European Championship in Belgrade, I probably would say Belgrade. But I want, I want, I want it with uh, Galatasaray fans. Yeah. So even though. They quit on me after the doping test, and they're still the number one in my heart. <laughs> yeah, we all know. We all know that that's unfortunate. <laughs> but you know, like, you know, like, we all we we know that you love Galatasaray fans, and you know, like Galatasaray yeah. fans love you so much. Uh, yeah, no matter yeah. what, no matter what. But uh, so, my actually question is that: Can you form a five for me with the best players you have played with? Best players I play with. I mean, I never thought about it. Yeah. Or the point mm. guard. What do you say? Point guard. Yeah. Gavantidis yeah, probably. Okay. For the shooting. I mean, if, he wants to, if, he, if he wants to play the point, you know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, top five. I mean, that I play with. Okay, let me go by team, man. Come on, yeah. you gotta make me. Now you make me rethink. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. should all think about your career and your team stuff, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that Belgrade. Jan Vesely got to be out there because he's still big right now. So I play with Jan, and Jan really uh, like a force right now in Europe. Yeah. Um, for Maccabi, Alan Anderson was a beast in Europe, EuroLeague. Yeah. So I put him in there. Diamantidis. Yeah. Uh, Alan Anderson, Alan Anderson, Jan Vesely, Jan Vesely. Um, Blake Shield, Blake Shield, Vlado maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's four. Yeah, you were missing Vlado maybe. Vlado. Yeah, Vlado. Yeah, maybe that's five. Yeah, okay. yeah, special five, special five. Okay, uh, and we got that answer and. My last question to you, you, we were also talking, chatting about Galatasaray fans, but you know, like, uh, what do you want to say about Galatasaray fans in general? Uh, we were all talking, but maybe your message to Galatasaray fans, uh, what do you want to say about them? Oh, I'm a, same thing I said earlier. It was yeah. an amazing time. I mean, I had one of the best time in my life in there. My family did too. The fans were great. They supported us through the whole thing and helped us win the championship. It was an amazing connection that we have between each other for now and for the rest of our lives. Um, I forever. I mean, I still post pictures from, uh, from Galatasaray yeah. in my social media because I still love exactly. the fact that we won the championship and we can take, no one can take that away from us. It's just unfortunate that happened. I had to quit on me after, so I'm still going to talk shit. They quit on me after. <laughs> so they can feel yeah. as bad as they want, you know. So, yeah. But no, we had a great time. I love the fans. I hope yeah. it can happen again. For sure, yeah. for sure. We hope, sure. Okay, so actually, uh, that was all my questions. Uh, you know, like, I... We actually, as an FCM Bilog, appreciate your time. Uh, we was really, you know, like, I was also really lucky to be here. We were, like, uh, thankful to you to be having you here. Uh, thank you again for the interview. It was a great interview, I guess. Uh, it was all sincere, your, you know, like, answers. It was all sincere. I felt that. And thank you. Um, thank you for having me, and I appreciate you coming. 
and uh, contact me and uh, us getting in touch, man. Uh, whenever you need me, I'm here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, man.